Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today. I'm going to just continue here with this article, 2000s were lost decade for middle class. This is following uh, this artic article right here. Many in middle class say they are doing worse financially. So, and um, moving on, it says some 85% of middle class people polled said it was harder to make ends meet now than a decade ago. Only 43% believe that their children's standard of living will be better than their own. So when they were asked by this poll uh, who they blamed for the decline, 62% placed a lot of blame on Congress, 54% blamed the banks, 47% blamed corporations, 44% blamed Bush, and 34 Obama. So remember what I was talking about before, it's like almost like the only one that you can blame is yourself. So, you know, it's like, yeah, there are a lot of people sold out in Congress and there's all these people to blame, but it's just like, uh, well, Bush was you know, somewhat elected, I guess. Uh, and, uh, you know, the banks, they're able to get away with what they can get away with because because the government allows them to and they encourage them to do so. And Congress, like, it, you know, you uh, put your authority and sign it over to them. So, you know, you can blame everybody you want, but uh, eventually it's going to have to come back to all of us for supporting this system. And uh, my website is ggnonline.com. Here's a poll. Do you believe the recent media attention of the feminist uh, bans, the riots, jail sentence, and the protests of the Russian embassy in London was a Western strategy to demonize and destabilize Russia? 51% said yes, followed by 22% no. And um, you can go in there and check it out, followed by email. So keep moving on here. Links will be posted in YouTube's video description. So we're talking about uh, wiping out of the middle class and what the 2000s were a lost decade for the middle class. So that kind of makes sense because that was the uh, that was the basically the year 2000 2001 which ushered in this new world order, which is why they call it the Freedom Tower because it's really what the Slave Tower. It's you know it's a new form of slavery and uh, the One World Order Trade Center. And you look at it, and it's pretty creepy. It looks semi-Masonic or something, right? So, And that was erected after they brought down um, the symbol of trade, world trade and all that. Because, we, you know, we didn't just lose our standard of living since then. We lost our freedom. So that's why they kind of put it in your face and call it the Freedom Tower. It's when you started to lose your freedoms, whatever ones you had left. So this, you can tell this is all by design. This isn't by a mistake or anything. So people blame this, they blame that. You can go ahead and blame the bankers. They're partly to blame. This is here, Texas judge preparing for civil war if Obama reelected. So I don't exactly agree with this. And it says here, reactions continue after a Texas leader issued a public warning for what he calls a civil war and possible invasion of the United Nations troops if President Obama is reelected. So, you know... Um, this is, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. It says here he's convinced that this puppet uh, winning a second term would lead to a revolt by the American people. And he's pushing a tax increase for the district attorney's office. Uh, he says here to beef up its resources in case Obama wins the election. So when asked if the judge should resign over his comments, it says, uh, I don't know if it will do any good if he resigns or not. I will be honest with you. This is West Texas. This is hardcore anti-Obama Tea Party. I guess area. So this Flores, I, uh, she says, I guess they're a commissioner, and she says here that uh, most of the people here are not anti-Obama, President of the United States. They're anti-Obama, the black man. So, and I, you know, that's why I think he was put there to divide the country up at this particular time and make it a race issue um, when the guy's, you know, probably more white than he is black genetically, right? And then uh, what? He's a he's a puppet. He speaks off a teleprompter. This picture. It says here, for a moment, the president turned into a teleprompter during a campaign stop in Columbus, Ohio, via Reuters. They took this picture. Uh, forward, right? You know, change. Forward, you know, just really bland stuff. So, I, you know, it's like um, to believe something like that, that he actually calls the shots is ridiculous. And to think that Romney, there's going to be any change or Ryan or Ron Paul. The U.S. Census Bureau helped racially target thousands of American citizens for armed government kidnappings and camp internments. So it says here, the U.S. Census Bureau claims you are required by law to reveal your race on their coercive questionnaire. And it says here, the Bureau workers can get ridiculously adamant about stalking you until you agree to fill out such forms.
So it says here that this could open you up for armed government kidnappings and invol involuntary relocation to a concentration camp where you are forced into slave labor. So that's, I mean, Army does have program for that. And they do have uh, possible uh, internment camps or relocation camps or national emergency centers. So, I mean, this is kind of realistic. Uh, now, this is based off World War II. So they're talking about the Japanese that was actually written into an executive order by um, Franklin Roosevelt. So they say it's a violation of constitution of the Constitution, it's Bill of Rights, and there's a legal loophole that was used. So this is my argument as far as the state goes and, oh, the Constitution and people that are going to die for it is there's always legal loopholes around it, um, and they're always going to be used against you by the people who created the legal system. Again, so when you're sitting there saying, well, they can't do, the, do this to us, this is a unconstitutional as you're being hauled off to a camp, you know, who's to blame? So with this downturn in the economy, we have, what, distressing life events and poverty behind many abortions in the United States. Most women accessing uh, abortion services in the U.S. have faced a major life stressor, such as job loss or separation in the preceding year, finds research published online in the Journal of Family Planning and Reproductive Health Care. Eugenics, hey. So, and then we have what, uh, we just covered this yesterday, of course, about less people having babies because of the economy. So, sheriff candidate deadly force okay to halt abortions. So, again, this is pretty crazy stuff, but this is the atmosphere that, uh, that is coming out right now. A county sheriff in New Hampshire made a, quite a few waves yesterday when he told uh, basically this news outlet that he would absolutely do what it took, including using deadly force to stop abortions. If someone is under threat, a full-grown human being, even, even if they're under threat, uh, what should the sheriff do? So he says, do everything in their power to prevent them from being harmed. So... But then he backtracked today saying comments about the use of deadly force against abortion doctors were unacceptable and he apologizes saying that I let my passionate stance against abortion get the better of me. And just to give you the layout, this was just this year in February about a sheriff. How's this for a change of pace? Sheriff who challenged feds for Amish raw dairy farmers receives award for meritorious valor. So it says here, it's pretty interesting actually. It was in Vegas. Um, that they had this Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officer Association in Las Vegas. How often do you hear cops call themselves peace officers because they're political law enforcement officers, right? And then talking about the Koch brothers in Koch, 72, who made his fortune partly by developing underground coal deposits in Somerset, Colorado's building, the out-of-the-way oasis, maybe bunker, doomsday bunker, at his nearby Beer Ranch, a working cattle operation southwest of Aspen. So the billionaire is developing a private Wild West town with a saloon, jail, and train station high in the Rocky Mountains. It's a 50-building uh, compound, and it says here it will include a 21,000-square-foot mansion with an elevator, wine room, and a third of the house will be underground, which is kind of important, I guess. Then wealthy Americans are less generous than middle-class Americans, says a study. It says wealthy Americans are less generous than middle-class Americans, according to a study published by the Chronicle of Philanthropy. Of the 1,000 most generous communities in the U.S., only nine are among the country's wealthiest, according to a study. The most generous communities were defined as those who gave the largest percentage of discretionary income to charity. So it goes on, and it says here, in terms of total t dollar amount, the wealthiest give the greatest amount to charity. It says, but those in the middle class give the biggest percentage of their income away. Because charity is what? Tax deductible. And a lot of times they go to what? The tax deductible uh, stuff is really it just, it's a racket because it gets makes uh, religious institutions part of the government. And then it takes all of these rich bastard billionaires like we were just talking about, and they put <laughs> the, all this money that's been siphoned off these standards of living, this wealth, um, and they put it into these charitable donations, which go towards eugenics, and they get paid back for it. It says here that it also found red states, I guess that's Republican or conservative states, tend to be more generous than blue states. It said it was part of a psychological research, which found that those who are better off economically become less empathetic. So interesting. It found that people in lower socioeconomic classes are more uh, physiologically attuned to the suffering of others and their middle and upper class counterparts. 
said religion was a big factor, said regions of the country that are deeply religious are more generous than those that are not. And finally, the study feeds into the new thread of research that argues that the wealthy are meaner and more selfish than the non-rich. I remember what I said yesterday. I'm not tied to any religion. Um, it says here, regions of the country that are deeply religious are more generous than those that are not. I just kind of equate it with people who have a belief in God or an afterlife. And it says here, godliness is the key to healthiness. Religion boosts mental health, says researchers. And I only included this because I just saw that part a little bit in that article. So uh, moving on here, we'll make a killing out of the food crisis. Glencore trading boss Chris Mahoney boasts, drought is good for business, says world's largest commodities trading company. Glencore's director of agriculture sparked controversy when he said the environment is a good one. He said here, high prices, lots of volatility, a lot of dislocation, tightness, a lot of arbitrage opportunities. We'll be able to provide the world with solutions, and that should also be good for Glencore. So this is as the G20 is considering holding an emergency summit on the world food crisis, which I think is engineered and hyped up. But it says here, it gives us a rare glimpse into the little-known world of companies. That's, I think... <laughs> They're, they're, they're conglomerates. There's like five food companies that feed the world that dominate the global food system. And it's so fucking stupid because they go in there and talk about regulation, regulation, regulation. No, we don't. It's because of governments that these things are allowed to exist, these entities to rape people and take advantage of them. Study reveals human drive for fair play. People will reject an offer of water even when they are severely thirsty if they perceive the offer to be unfair, according to a new study. So... That's pretty interesting, isn't it? They said they have a tendency to reject unfair offers, preferring to let both parties walk away with nothing rather than accept a lower offer. It's interesting because they did uh, they did uh, research on what? On chimpanzees, you know? So basically, this is the engineers, social engineers, who, carry out, who help carry out this um, economic warfare, which leads to these, uh, this type of environment for... Uh, these types of uh, people like the sheriffs and all that and quote extremism and people want to blame this and they want answers and they want quote change and the thing is is they want to see how much these big companies these big billionaires net can use the government the state and their power and wealth and influence in all of these charitable organizations to fuck people to royally fuck them and to take a shitty offer because it's something when there's finding that people are saying no Screw you. <laughs> I don't want your scraps. So Europeans don't expect bright socioeconomic futures. So it's just like Americans, right? Hmm. Sounds like a big plan to me, right? So the overwhelming majority of Europe's population has grave concerns about the continent's economic social prospects. So 37% of those surveyed said family relationship problems now take a larger toll on European families than five years ago while 34% said they believe a rosy future is ahead for uh, Europe. So I, I, don't, I guess it's good that people, you know, still have their glasses half filled. So Finland prepares for the breakup of the catastrophic Eurozone causing misery for millions. They believe the collapse is only a matter of time. So one individual said he did not trust the clique of leaders pushing for a fiscal union. That's right, a United States of Europe, where states will lose even more sovereignty like they did with the EU. So these world powers, they know what this means, and this is what it means. Like I said before, it's going to create all kinds of different environments. 26 alleged neo-Nazis stand trial in Germany for a keeping file on left-wing activists, as well as sabotage activities in the western part of the European It says here the NDP, the National Democratic Party, is a legal political wing of the far-right extremists in Germany currently taking advantage of the global economic crisis and focusing on the social difficulties to recruit more members. It runs youth centers and football clubs and makes holiday plans for low-income families. German police conduct major raids on neo-Nazis. It says here that 900 officers raided homes and suspected neo-Nazis in a crackdown the Western German state, they seized far-right propaganda material, computer hard drives, as well as a variety of weapons. So this individual said these groups are anti-foreigner, I guess that's anti-immigration, they are racist, or maybe tribalist, and they are anti-Semitic. This is why I'm covering it. Germany allows domestic military operations within the country's borders for the first time in a long time. They say it's not in, it's not going to be used for political demonstrations, but I think it will be. In Austria, an anti-Semitic cartoon prompts inquiry, where you have the government serving a big fat banker and the people on the side with a bone on its plate. 
Anti-Semitism is still high in Germany, and it's common in the mainstream, but you wouldn't know because it's illegal in Germany to talk about it.